presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Ohio. You can only imagine the butterflies floating around in the belly right now. That young man, Luis Castillo. Jumped on the big bird, and he's here all the way from Double A Pensacola to make his major league debut here tonight at Nationals Park in the nation's capital. Game one of three, the Reds taking on the Washington Nationals. It is a steamy Friday night. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh and Jim Day. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome, as always, to Major League Baseball right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Walk me through, if you can remember, walking out of the dugout to start to warm up for your first major league start and what Castillo must be going through right now. Well, it was a big crowd for me, just like it is tonight. It was in San Francisco on a day game, and you have you have butterflies, big-time butterflies, until you get through the first inning. I mean, the first couple of batters, you're wondering, you know, is my stuff good enough? Now, Castillo might not be thinking that because he's got plenty good enough stuff. We're talking about a top-of-the-rotation type of a, a pitcher right here, a guy that is able to throw the ball anywhere from 95 to 100 miles an hour. He's got a plus changeup. The one thing, and this is kind of the same thing I've heard through a number of the people in the Reds organization, he throws too many strikes. Boy, isn't that a nice problem to have? Wow. He's a guy who's around the strike zone so much, they're trying to get him to work the corners a little bit more rather than just pound it right in there in the middle. You might be able to get by with that down in Pensacola. Doesn't work like that up here in the National League. You just word, use the word pound. These Nationals can pound the baseball. Boy, they really can. If you go out there and just challenge them with fastballs, they can figure out a way to get the barrel on it. And they hit a lot of home runs. This ballpark is conducive to home runs. The interesting thing about this Nationals team, though, they play so well on the road, they really run their record way up there. They're not nearly as good at home. In fact, they lost their last homestand. We'll see if the Reds can't get it going and maybe put it on them a little bit here. Well, they are facing a power pitcher. No two ways about that are the Reds here tonight. And the right-hander, Steven Strasburg. Well, the guy always seems to have a way to win. I mean, he's been double-digit wins for four times in his major league career. Of course, he was much ballyhooed as a top pick, maybe the best pitcher of our generation, right? Well, he's been sidelined by a lot of injuries. You know, the 8-2 and two record aside, he's got pretty good peripheral numbers, but he doesn't have a tendency to deep pitch into a or, pitch deep into ball games and you know when he's out there though every one of his pitches is one of the best pitches you're going to see fastball breaking ball change up I mean every one of those is you'd like to die for any one of them I'll tell you when we come back this series will feature two of the speediest players in the league both at the top of their team's respective batting order our main man Jim Day standing by with more.
here in D.C. I'm Jim Day. This weekend set will feature two of the speediest leadoff men in baseball. Trey Turner, a budding superstar, and you know about Billy Hamilton. These two guys are leading the league in steals. Billy Hamilton, despite the 237 average, continues to lead with 31 thefts. And Turner right behind him with 27, hitting just below 260. Turner playing shortstop, Hamilton manning center field. Billy's ready to rock and roll at the top of the order for the Reds. Check out the lineups and for the call, Tom Brenneman and Chris Welch. All righty, Jim Day, always great having you on board on our Reds coverage here on Fox Sports Ohio. Take a look at the Reds starting lineup presented by Menards. Hamilton, Jeanette Votto, followed by Duvall, Suarez, Shepler, a latter third of Mezzarocco, Peraza, and the major league debut of Luis Castillo. And on the mound for the Nationals, hard throwing 28 year old right hander Steven Strasburg. He'll turn 29 in July. He misses ball one high, and we are underway. Only once in Strasburg's career. Has he been able to go the distance? 34 starts in a season, over 200 innings. That was 2014. Most years he's good enough for 23, 24 starts, and they're really good starts. And his numbers are really, really good. But as great as his stuff is and the buildup is, he is a long ways from being considered a Hall of Fame like pitcher. Now he has a long way to go, Chris, but if you can't take the ball, you're not going to the Hall of Fame. Well, he came into Major League Baseball so heralded, and the expectations were absolutely just so high that it would be hard to meet them all, especially when he was beset by injury. But he's putting up the kind of numbers this year that he hasn't done really since his rookie year, and that was seven years ago. Although throughout all the, the injuries and the tribulations surrounding Steven Strasburg, he's recently surpassed 1,000 inning pitch mark and that's uh, something that only 13 percent of all major league pitchers have ever gotten to so uh, a, a guy that uh, certainly when he's on his game one of the best around and that's right three call to Billy Hamilton not sure he agreed with Ramon de Jesus the home plate umpire tonight well here's the breaking ball comes out of his hand looks like a fastball up and out of the zone and then it's got such a tight spin it just like it just buckles you and not only right handers but as you can see it can do that to Billy Hamilton who was really just going to drop down a butt right there two strikes or not he's just trying to figure out a way to get on base. Billy tried a two strike bunt you may remember actually put it in play but bunted it right back to the pitcher in the just completed Tampa series swing and a miss by Scooter Jeanette 284 batter nine home runs 37 runs batted in. Reds coming to play tonight. 11 games, a season worst under 500. Eight games out of first place in the National League Central. The Nationals have the fourth best record in the National League. You have the three teams out in the National League West who keep winning seemingly every night Dodgers, Diamondbacks, Colorado when they're not playing one another. And then the Nationals, a nine game lead over Atlanta. In the National League East at 43 and 29. Big crowd on this hot summer night in D.C. High fly ball in a deep right center field, and it oh, will fly out of here. Scooter! This remarkable season for Scooter Jeanette continues. He hit 14 all of last year. And in a little more than 150 at bats, he has 10 this year. I mean, this deal that the Reds have when they receive Scooter Jeanette from the Milwaukee Brewers just continues to look better and better and better. I mean, the downside for Scooter Jeanette was he was going to cost some of the younger guys, maybe Alcantara, a little bit of playing time. But boy, what production. That guy centers up the baseball. Better than anybody on that ball club this side of Joey Votto. Look at those numbers for Jeanette. Of course, four of those home runs, 10 of those runs batted in, came in one game. That historic night against the Cardinals at the beginning of the month. But 
the production is still there regularly for Jeanette. I can't tell you what that does to your bench when you're facing Steven Strasburg at home big crowd you laid it all out Tom this guy throwing BBs up there with one of the nastiest breaking balls out there and you get a first inning home run out of a utility infielder man that gets you going a little bit. Ball two strikes on Joey Votto 306 20 home runs for Votto and now for the first time really in his career as great as it's been there's talk about Votto and he openly talked about it being a part perhaps of the home run derby at this year's all star game. Emergency swing there and fouls it off. I'll tell you what with Steven Strasburg on the mound if you have a seat down the left field line. Anywhere from the Reds dugout down, oh, about midway down in the left field, you better be wide awake tonight. Don't turn your head to take a sip of beer and talk to your girlfriend until you make sure there's a right handed hitter up there. Because Joey's up there, he's up there to protect right now. Giving equal chance to the second deck. Spread it around a little bit. Great place to watch a game. See the nation's capital well beyond the left field wall. Maybe about a mile, mile and a half away from here. Pulled back up through the middle and into center field. A base hit by Votto. So well, that is one single. frustrating at bat for Strasburg. That may even be more frustrating than the home run that he gave up to Jeanette. I mean, you work like crazy to get a pitch by him. You can't do it. Then after a several foul balls, Votto figures out a way to to take this breaking ball right back through the middle. They play him the pull, but he really go, keeps his hands so far inside that ball. Just thinking about hitting it through the middle, and that's exactly where it went. That guy is amazing. Of course, when the Reds and the Nationals get together, we see a familiar face as Skipper on the first base side dugout here at Nationals Park, and that would be, of course, Dusty Bing. Manager Reds for six years from 2008 to 2013. Won over 500 games as Reds manager. In fact, in his six years, the Reds won 90 or more games in three of the six, going to the playoffs three times. He was let go at the end of the 2013 season. Center field, and that ball's going to fall in. It was in the air a long, long time, and Alvado on his way to third, and his due ball into second base. So three straight hits. Well, that seemed to be in the air a long time. Well, you know, they're playing with a young man who was just recalled from the minor leagues today, Wilmer Defoe. And he's in center field tonight. Harper comes over, and I got to figure that there was just a little bit of miscommunication right here. You can see the angle of the ball coming off the bat that. Maybe he was spooked a little bit. Harper was by the center fielder. I don't know, but I mean, that's a play you got to figure Harper should make. Well, now you have a chance to really do some damage here in this opening inning against a guy like Strasburg. You know, Strasburg's a lot like the Nationals. He is incredible on the road, and really just very average at home. He has an ERA of up over four here in his ballpark. So. You know, look, you're only talking about what 70 plus games into a season, so it's not like we're you know, covering 162 here. It all may even out, but so far, Strasburg and the Nationals, a much better road player, pitcher, and team than here in front of big crowds at Nationals Park. Big at bat now for Suarez. Now, the one thing to keep in mind always for Strasburg's on the mound, Dusty Baker, with really any of his starters, maybe this side of Scherzer. It is that he's going to really protect them. They're not letting this guy go more than 100 pitches. Not with his injury record. Six stints on the DL in six years. So the more pitches you can get him to throw every inning, the fewer innings he's going to throw, and the more you want to get into that Washington bullpen. It has been the sore point of this team, or otherwise they'd have a record a lot like the Dodgers, Arizona, or Colorado right now. Maybe even better.
Now, if you're trying to figure out what those pitches are, the Strasburg throws, he, he's really a four-pitch combination pitcher. Throws mainly a four-seam fastball. That's going to register about 95 to 97. He throws his curveball 22% of the time, and then his changeup 17. The one you see about 91, that's a hard slider. That's the changeup. At 89. But it's all relative. I mean, that's the same speed that the changeup that you will see out of the hand of the Red Starter, Luis Castillo, will be tonight. You've got two flamethrowers on the mound here in Washington this evening. Big pitch right here for Suarez and the Reds. Second and third, one out, three and one to count. Through the gas and walked it below the mark. Great at bat. And I say that because if you're not confident as a hitter, that you can catch up with the fastball. You start your swing a little bit early, and you end up swinging at pitches that are just outside the zone. As far as boy, he laid off a couple of changeups down out of the zone, and he laid off that chest high fastball there. Well, the pitching coach of these Nationals, a familiar face. That's Mike Maddox, the older brother of Hall of Famer Greg Maddox. Mike's been around a long time. So they are loaded for Shepler. Well, you know how Shepler likes the first pitch. This will be interesting to see what Strasburg comes up with. High fly ball straight away center. This will bring in a run. Tagging and scoring is Vano on the third goes Duvall and the Reds have a two nothing lead in the first inning. Still two runners on. For Devin Mezzarocco and two out. Shepley driving in his 40th run of this season. Devin closing in on 100 at bats this season. Has six home runs and 10 knocked in. And there's a base hit into right field that'll play another run. A three spot here in the opening frame and still going to the Reds against Strasburg. Uh, there's no doubt that this Reds team can put runs on the board. A little jam shot right here. But, you know, Mesoraco is so strong. He generates a really a lot of bat speed. And he's able to keep that ball off of his hands, at least onto the trademark, so he's able to drop it into the outfield. I suppose you never know, but if you're Luis Castillo, and your team's coming to bat in this year major league debut. You're thinking there's no way I'll be walking into that on deck circle in the first inning. Is there? Well there he is. Peraza the eighth man to bat in Castillo before he ever throws a major league pitch. Has a three nothing lead. This year, nine of the 14, two or fewer. So, Reds are doing something that doesn't happen a lot to Steven Strasburg, and they're adding on to it. There's another knock into center field. 
They're going to wave around the runner. Here comes the throw to the plate. Cut off. Four nothing Reds. Peraza with a two out, two strike RBI. Boy, how big is that? I mean, the four run lead being one thing. But making Strasburg out there work, I mean, just silencing this crowd, giving yourself a lot of energy in the dugout, all those things working right now for the Reds. All right now, Castillo is first. I mean, think of the odds, right? I mean, if Vegas is taking odds, does he throw his first major league pitch before his first major league at bat? He's throwing it with a 4 nothing lead. He's After kind of like a that. ground out in the first inning. All right, Mr. Castillo, you can't ask for much more than that. Ready for his first big league start. Brian Price said he's one of those guys in spring training to just immediately pass the look test. It has a nice advantage if he's commanding those pitches because he never feels or should feel like he has to concede with a fastball out over the plate when, when he has the ability to throw changeup for a strike as equally as he does his fastball. Well, Chris, the scouting report. A lot of Reds fans tonight have, have heard about Luis Castillo. What can you tell me? Well, he's a guy that, like Brian Price says, when he can command his pitches, and that's one reason why he's only walked 13 when you're talking about 80 innings. That's amazing for a young man like that. Now he's 24 years old pitching in double A. So you may say, well, yeah, he's ahead of the curve here by being in the big leagues now, but it's a rarity to see the Reds call up a pitcher from double A. The only other one they've called up in the last few years was this year, Ariel Hernandez. But, you know, this is an ongoing audition. I mean, the Reds have seen all the other pitchers, you know, uh, Romano and Davis and Garrett, and now it's Castillo's turn to take a look at it. And uh, if he is anything like what the people in the minor league system have talked to me about, we're going to be in for a treat here. Now, the obvious thing is to, you know, don't get your expectations too high. He's making his major league debut. He's got a lot of things going on emotionally out there. It's not just the fastball. It's how you control your breathing and your heart and your head when you're on a big league diamond. All right, so he came over during the offseason in that Dan Straley deal, and his first pitch as a major leaguer is a fastball that's in there at 98 miles per hour, strike one. Hello, hello. And they'll throw the ball out. Probably got sure. burn marks on it. It might. might a little warm to the touch. I think everything in D.C. is warm to the touch right now. With it, it's a part of the country with the all the water surrounding this area and the Chesapeake Bay and the rivers. I mean, it gets mighty warm in these parts. Humidity. This is away. One ball and two strikes. Trey turning the shortstop. Jim Day told you a short while ago. Scott can run. Has two 
There are four fewer stolen bases now than Billy Hamilton's 31. And a strikeout on that breaking ball down and away. First major league out recorded by Castillo. Now that was the slider right here that he gets a strikeout with. And it was really a pitch that he did not come over with when he came with the Nationals. I mean, as a young man in the minor leagues, when you throw 100 miles an hour, you don't really have a lot of urgency to work on your breaking stuff. But the Reds minor league coaches, Danny Darwin is his coach down in double A, done a great job with him. Tony Fossis, of course, the roving guy, has been had his hands in it. A lot of different pitching coaches in spring training, but for the most part, I mean, you're trying to develop him at the same time, but keep his confidence up. I like to start. The other thing I like about him is that he's pitching from the very far third base side of the dugout. There's a drive in the right center field and identical to the start in the top of the first inning. A strikeout and then a home run. This one by Goodwin, number five. Now even fastballs in the upper 90s are hitting speed when hitters anticipate them and get that back going. Goodwin did just that. Well, he's been a very pleasant surprise for the Nationals so far this year. So now the batter is Bryce Harper. You know, for him, had a real down year in 2016. After the monster 2015, when he was the league's most valuable player. But he's back to being where they want him to be. On the ground of the right side. So Castillo is able to say the first time I faced Bryce Harper, I got him out on a ground ball. Hey, let's take a look and see what really Luis Castillo throws out there as far as his repertoire. We covered this in the pregame show. And, you know, the four seam fastball you're going to see a lot of 95 to 100, a plus changeup. That scout turns talk for a guy that has better than a major league changeup. The slider's developing. And the people in the minor league say, you know, he throws too many strikes. Uh, he's around the zone so much that hitters can come up there and anticipate getting good pitches to hit. That may have been the case there with the home run ball hit by Brian Goodwin. Goodwin. So the question, you know, well, how do you not throw good strikes? Well, you know what? You want to throw a lot of strikes, but you want to start having command of that pitch instead of control. Control is being able to throw the ball over the plate. Command is throwing it to a certain part of the zone. Right here is a guy who probably would be the league's MVP if the season ended today, and that's Ryan Zimmer. He is batting a whopping 347, 19 home runs, 57 runs batted in, has 20 doubles. First ever Nationals first round pick out of the University of Virginia. Longtime third baseman. Injuries appear to slow him down for a while, made the conversion to first. And what a year so far. And the hits keep on coming. Look at the rest of Dusty Baker's lineup tonight, presented by Menards. You've seen Turner, Goodwin, Harper, Zimmerman. Here comes Daniel Murphy, another 340 plus hit. Anthony Rendon, the third baseman. Wieners behind the plate. Defoe in center, and Strasburg on the mound. Reds lead 4 1 in the first. Two outs, runner in first. You know, another important decision for the manager when you have a pitcher making his major league debut like Castillo is here tonight is, you know, what catcher do you want behind the plate? I mean, Mezzarocco through the years has always been considered the better offensive catcher. Barnhart has always been considered the better defensive catcher. Well, let's, let's hope that Luis Castillo is up here long enough to get to know both of them very well. Another 98 mile per hour fastball in there, strike one to Murphy. This guy can hit. I mean, he has always been a good hitter. Yeah, I think that he's expe exceeded expectations uh, when the 
Nationals got him last year. They had no idea that he was going to go off the way he did, especially from a power standpoint. You know, Murphy had actually you know, claimed the job as a regular player with the Mets and then lost it because he was never a good defender. But after a while, you hit enough. And this guy can really hit. I mean, you look at some of his years in the big leagues, not even as an everyday player. He's hitting 320, 290, 289. And then he comes to the Nationals last year, like you said, Chris, 347. He hit in 142 games, 47 doubles, 25 home runs, and knocked in 104 runs. And he's on pace to be even better than that this year. One two pitch. Pass ball swung on and fouled away. The Reds on defense presented by Ford. You've seen everybody come to the plate already. Jeanette playing regularly at second with Peraza is short. Zach Cozart beginning baseball activities today. And believes he'll be off the disabled list after the 10 days are up. Be ready to come back. That'll be on the upcoming homestand. Swing and a miss, it gets through. A favorable bounce for Mezzarocco. And they get the out at first. Boy, the Reds will take that break. Castillo applauding to the baseball gods for that break. I mean, he just got a fist pump from his manager there that, you know, if you can sort of get through walking into a major league ballpark, warming up in the bullpen, walking out to the mound before your first major league pitch, and you said before the game started that first inning was critical. It is. I mean, because after the first inning, it's back to baseball again. He gets a feel of the mound. He knows what the background looks like. He gets a feel of what the crowd noise is all about. You've worked right through the, the biggest part of their order. I mean, you had Bryce Harper and Ryan Zimmerman and Daniel Murphy up in that inning. So now you think you can do it. Now you get you buckle down, you start, you know, executing your pitches. And the Reds can't just all of a sudden decide, hey, four against Strasburg is enough. Because this Nationals offense is among the very, very best, if not the best, in multiple categories in the National League. This team can hit.
Now, if you're thinking about a bunt, this may be one that you lay down here. You're going to get a fastball three and one here. Hamilton showed a two strike bunt attempt and took strike three his first time up. And a little bouncer down to Rendon. One out. Washington on defense presented by Philly. Talked about Defoe just called up from the minor league. You know all about Harper among the game's very, very best. Outstanding infield offensively for sure. And Weeder's a one time Baltimore Oriole now with the Nationals. Of course, their longtime catcher is. He might have been activated for all I know off the disabled list tonight where we just left in Tampa Bay Wilson Ramos. He was a good player here for a long time. Scooter Jeanette Homer to right center field in the first inning looks at a breaking ball strike one. So far on this road trip. They remember Zach Cozart went on the disabled list when it began. And that is four out of 13. With two home runs, three knocked in, has drawn three walks. You know, it's funny how you, you produce like Jeanette has produced. And you know, when the year began, everybody said, look, peraza has got to play. He's the future of your team. And now all of a sudden people are saying, well, he might be the future of the team, but Jeanette right now is really good to sit him down. So, you know, does it ultimately become, Chris, a, a matter of Brian Price just having to maneuver Jeanette around the infield and the outfield just to get some advance once Cozart comes back? Well, the injury to Cozart allows him to circumvent that problem for a while, but it comes back to the discussion between developing versus winning right now. Uh, I don't think there's any question that offensively Jeanette's a superior player than than Peraza right now. But I mean if you really do believe that Peraza is the guy then you give him as a youngster you know the majority of the playing time and Jeanette comes over uh, you know when, when Dick Williams introduced Scooter Jeanette in spring training you said you know we paid more than we wanted to for a utility infielder but we think we're going to get a lot out of him. I don't think they ever thought they'd get this much, but that's what his role has been since the very beginning. I don't see changing that right now unless you think 2018 is the year that you can win and maybe even surprise some people here on the back end of 2017. We'll see how it plays out. Three balls and no strikes on Votto after the home run by Jeanette in the first inning. He singled. Red scored four times. Against Steven Strasburg, getting five hits, drawing a walk. But I'm not sure about that.
Balls two strikes. Strasburg to Votto. Came with a gas. And Joey lifts a fly ball into left field. And this will do it. Reds get four in the first. They're down one, two, three in the second. 4 1. Reds in front. Elk and Elk, Reds have already flipped the script on this. The Nationals normally are the team that jumps on the opposition very early. The run differential plus 32, third best in the league. Whereas the Reds are very good late in the game. It's been the Reds very good early with his 4-1 lead so far here tonight. Rendon, Weeders, Depot against Luis Castillo. Castillo allowed a one-out solo home run, a good one. Gave up a two-out single to Zimmerman. Got two strikeouts. Sixth rookie pitcher and 11th pitcher overall to start a game for the Reds so far this year is Castillo. Only the Mariners and the Mets have used more starting pitchers than the Reds this season. And it's safe to say neither the Mariners nor the Mets are having a good year. I mean, the Mariners are one game over 500. It's certainly not a bad year, but they're buried in their division. Whereas the Mets are one game better than the Reds, 10 games under. Two and one on Rendo. That tells you though is that the rookies that have been getting starts for the Reds since 2015 have not been good enough to stick around and pitch in the major leagues on a consistent basis because you run that many out there 192 all you need is you know five or six to stick right that's how difficult it is to find big league starting pitching. That's why when, when when you hear at the beginning of the year, oh, we got all these great prospects. 
Well, you know, you've had 195 rookie starts since 2015. If just 10 percent of those, how about 5 percent of those actually were good enough to stick around, you wouldn't be running rookies out this year. That's basically the way you're looking at it. So it, it, it's not a perfect science. There's no question about it. Reds have seen a lot, and they've seen a lot come, and they've seen a lot go. Well, I tell you, I, and, and it's not, when I say this, you've heard me say this for years. I mean, you know, when we get together with, with other teams, broadcasters, or, or really even, you know, some front office types from other teams, and they start talking about prospects in the minor leagues, I mean, I politely just tune out. <laughs> And I mean that. I, and I don't say that as a shot or a slap. You hope and pray that every young man who, who is billed as a, as a prospect, this ball hammered down the right field line towards the corner and foul. I mean, you hope they all make it, and they're all great stars. But there have just been, when you're fortunate enough, like we have been, Chris, to broadcast to this great game for 30-plus years, you know, you, you've heard about a lot of prospects. Well, you hear more about them now than you ever did before. There never used to be a list of, you know, who's the best prospect all the way down to number 60 in your own organization. And then it's how well the, the minor league coordinator politics to get them on the Baseball America list. You know, uh, you know, you can you need to out talk your competitor and another team. So, you know, you got to have good players. There's no question about it. Sure. You've got to have a, a pipeline that constantly provides you options. And there are some years where your minor leagues seem to be thin. There are other years when, you know, you're full of good prospects. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm sitting here talking about, you know, the Reds press prospects in particular. I mean, I, I remember saying to Lynn Casper, a good friend of ours here, strike three by Weeders. He's an outstanding announcer of the Chicago Cubs. And, you know, for about two or three years here, all we heard about was Jorge Soler, Jorge Soler, Jorge Soler. And maybe one day Jorge Soler will go to the Hall of Fame. But we'll be with the Cubs. It won't be with the Cubs. And I don't think it'll be with Kansas City either. You know, it's kind of interesting, Tom. I mean, it, even players that have come up and have had flashes of really great streaks in the major leagues. Kyle Schwarber. Another was, example. Was sent down to the minor leagues by the Cubs, what, yesterday? Yes. So it just goes to show you, this is a very difficult game. It's a double play ball here. This should end the inning. There's one, there's two, and it will end the inning. So after a leadoff walk, a strikeout, and a double play, Reds lead 4-1. Brought to you by T-Mobile. The Astros just keep on keeping on. First team to 50 wins this season. Best start in team history. 
Heard the guys talking about Middletown's Kyle Schwarber proved positive how hard it is to excel at this level. Sent to AAA and the Dodgers, we saw them mash recently. While they keep mashing, they set a team record by hitting 14 home runs in a four game series versus the Mets. Bellinger, Grandal, Seeger each had three of those home runs. You know, I love the comments, Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, many of you obviously have a, a, an interest in Kyle Schwarber, young man, grew up just north of Cincinnati and played high school baseball and football. And, you know, went over to, to star collegiately at Indiana. And a number one pick by the Cubs. And I loved reading the comments from his teammates, not from Schwarber, but from his teammates. And the two in particular were Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant, the undisputed leaders of that Chicago Cubs team. And they said, look, we know if there's anybody out there that's going to go down there and get it together because of his work ethic, his toughness, the way he is as a teammate, the kind of person he is, the kind of personality he is. I mean, those are the things you love to read about a yeah. kid, you know, from other players. And I don't think that Rizzo and Bryant are the kind that are just giving that some lip service. Oh, I don't think so either. I mean, we know Schwarber a little bit, not like they do, of course. But, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I would say the same thing about him. I would say the same thing about, you know, Amir Garrett. I, I really believe that guy gets it. And, and it's just a matter of time. It's just very difficult to make the transition sometimes. To this out. level, the pressure is on you as an everyday hitter like Schwarber. Every day, Madden, Joe Madden put him in the leadoff spot this year, so all eyes are on him from the very first pitch of the ball game. And the more he slumped, the bigger his swing got, his leg lift got bigger. He was trying harder and harder and then too hard. That's what the minor leagues are for. Get your act together and you get back up here. You know, the other thing that people forget is uh, on top of all those things Chris that you just said. Schwarber's was injured the first series of the year yeah. last year. He did not come back and play until the World Series. So this guy missed almost an entire year of baseball. So to think that he would start this year and pick up where he left off in the World Series last year is you know probably a stretch we wish him well here's Suarez he walked his first time up straight up in the air so now it appears Schwarber uh, Strasburg that was a combination of Schwarber and Strasburg I'll work on that while we're on to Brian Giesenslaw Field down the line off the bat of Scott Shepler. This will be extra bases, although Harper has a gun out there, but in standing up is Shepler with a two out double. I'm really surprised the Nationals, I mean, their scouts see the Reds as much as we see the Reds. And in two consecutive at bats, they throw Scott Shepler, who's a bona fide good fastball hitter, a fastball to start the at bat. First time up, he had a sacrifice fly that played it a run. This time he jumps on a low one and rips it down the right field line. I mean in these days of exacting scouting reports. Uh, I think that. Sometimes you ought to go back to basics a little bit. What's this guy like on the first pitch. What's his strength. What's his weakness. Is he hot right now or not. Or you just do it the old fashioned Tom Seaver way. When I throw it high, I throw it hard. When I throw it low, I throw it slow. When I come inside, it's hard. When I throw it away, it's slow. Let's go get him. Well, he had pretty good stuff to work with. The guys out here tonight have pretty good stuff. They didn't have Tom Seaver stuff. They didn't have Tom Seaver command. No. No. I would say Strasburg has Tom Seaver stuff. Now, his stuff 
I mean raw. I mean the whole pack slider. That's what but I meant. What's missed the missing part of the package is the consistency that you take with yes. you on the mound every fifth day. Yeah, I mean how people. you get by when you don't have your good stuff, for instance, your good release point or your good fastball. That's where a Hall of Famer like Seaver, who was one of the best ever, you know, far exceeded everybody around him. That's into center field, and it'll fall ahead. That means another run. That's a second big two-out hit in this game for Devin Mesoraco to drive in runs. I tell you, I, I can't believe Wilmer Defoe. You know, getting your first start out there since getting called up from the minor leagues, I guess, earlier today. Doesn't die for this ball. There's two outs right here. I mean, he pulls up on this ball like it's going to go all the way to the wall if it gets by him. You got a guy coming over behind you right there. You've got to come charging that ball, knowing what the situation is, that if I make a catch right here, it saves a run, and we're out of the inning. If I miss it, I've got the guy coming up behind me, the left fielder, backing me up. Reds will take it. Reds three of four with runners in scoring position so far tonight. There's a fly ball down the right field line and unable to get there is Harper. If you're wondering, Tom Seaver, all he did was 3,640 strikeouts, 311 wins, a career career. Earned run average of 2.8. He was inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame in 1992. It was the highest percentage of votes ever recorded at the time. Now who voted against him? Yeah, well, that, I mean, he didn't go in year. unanimously, right? 98.84. Okay, well, Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, I mean, broke that. He's the closest ever at 99.32%. How can you not vote for Seaver or Griffey on the very first Well, ballot? we could go through 100 guys. Babe Ruth didn't get 100%. Well, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays. Just remember, on on. it's a museum. Well, you and I were talking about Tom Seaver before the game today. You know, he was diagnosed with Lyme disease a number of years ago. He suffered from some loss of memory and, and many other, you know, uh, repercussions from that terrible disease. He went in July of 2013, it was starting to get so bad, he went through a regimen of a lot of vitamins, was feeling a lot better. Um, still some short term memory loss, but otherwise, he's doing all right. And uh, if there's any chance he's watching this game, Well, what a great guy he was. Not a great pitcher. Great guy he is. Fun to be around. Incredible sense of humor. There were very few few things better than when he was still announcing for the New York Mets than playing them in a series and just being able to hang out with him for about three days. What a guy. I never knew him like that, Tom. I knew him as a competitor. That guy... What a competitor. I mean, he just wanted to win all the time. Every pitch. He's told the story many times where you, know, you go up there to sacrifice fun, he gives you one pitch. If you foul him off or get called for a strike, he came right halfway in from the mound. All right, you're mine now. Yep. Well, gotta love the pitch count the Reds have been able to do on Strasburg here so far. That's all for Peraza and the Reds, but they come up with a two out rally. Double by Shepler, single by Mezzarocco, and the lead is back at four.
Ohio brought to you by Chevy. Check out our award-winning lineup only at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. And by Skyline Chili, feeling good. Mm, it's Skyline time. Ball right here in D.C. Man, what a nice town. And we've told the story many times. One of the, the coolest parts about this town is they have an old law here where the height of a building cannot be higher than the width of the street in front of it. Or it has to stay within a certain amount of, of height compared to the street which it sits on. So what ultimately that means is, you know, if you've ever been to New York or Chicago or, or some other big cities, Boston, whatever it may be, you know, where you have skyscraper after skyscraper after skyscraper, right? I mean, these, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 story buildings everywhere, one after the other. Here in D.C., you walk around downtown and there's nothing more than seven, eight, nine floors. And you feel like that you can see the sky on a beautiful day. You feel like you're outside during the day. I mean, heck, if there are days in New York City in certain areas you walk around and you don't know whether it's day or night. There's a bouncing ball to the right side, and that'll take care of Strasburg to open up the Nationals third. This is a really nice tag. Strike one, Turner, the leadoff man, struck out. So here's Castillo working into the bottom of the third, and he's allowed the run, the home run, by Goodwin in the first. He's walked about, struck out three, allowed two hits. Two strikes. Turner waits. And he tried the fastball at 99 miles per hour and missed wide. Second walk. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote every day until the deadline for your Reds for the 2017 All Stars. The e Assurance MLB All Star Game ballot. Go to Reds.com slash vote. Of course, the 88th Major League All Star Game on Fox. Presented by MasterCard is on July 11th from Miami. Beautiful look at Nationals Park. Ryan Goodwin homered to right center field in the first inning. The only Nationals run against Castillo. One on, one out. We're in the third. Now we brought up earlier, Turner can run. 27 stolen bases. He's been thrown out just five times. He has more than the rest of his teammates combined. Not a super athletic sort of Nationals team. Of course, you don't see a lot of teams in baseball that you would refer to as athletic. The Reds would be one of the few, and they have been described that way by many scouts that have watched them play pretty regularly this year. 
Doesn't mean you have to be the guy that runs the fastest or jumps the highest, all those kinds of things when you think about an athlete, because in baseball, some of those things aren't as heavily required as you might see in football or in basketball. I mean, you look at a guy like Suarez. Suarez is a former shortstop who's playing third base. He's an athletic guy. Cozart's a big, strong guy, but a good athlete. Peraza, mm -hmm. extremely athletic. Likewise for Scheffler and White, you look at him, you think of a linebacker. But very fast. You know about Hamilton. Duvall moves around very well for a big guy out and left. We're talking about elite athletes. Well, now all of a sudden, this strike thrower, as he was described to you, Chris Welsh, by many down in the you know minor leagues that have seen this young man pitch, he's walked three batters in the first two and a third inning. Well, he only walked 13 all year down in Double A, so it might be a fact of just trying a little bit too hard. Seeing these guys again, thinking, all right, I've got a rear back and throw a little extra harder here or a little more snap on my breaking ball. The thing about it is that neither Brian Price nor Mac Jenkins has really worked a whole lot with Luis Castillo all year long. So, you know, you, could, you, you don't know the nuances. And I'm sure that they've talked at length with Danny Darwin and Tony Fossus to kind of convey whatever they know about the little things that can go wrong with him. Is it mental? Is there a flaw in his delivery that comes up when he gets tired? Does he drop his arm? Does he fly open? Stuff like that. But it's very difficult here first time out. Well, you've walked two batters in front of the most dangerous hitter. Over the last number of years, anyway, in this Nationals lineup. First pitch changeup. Got to like that a little bit. Ball misses in. One and one on Bryce Harper. He bounced out to the second baseman, Jeanette, in the first inning. Well, if you can feather a nice little change up low and away right here, sell it, get it down, you might get a ground ball. Comes the change. And that's a strike. You could see Harper pull the trigger just a little early right there. I don't mean pull the trigger with the swing, but his body moves. So the deception with the changeup was there. You see him jump at it a little bit. That's a good sign. But you got to follow it up with a even better one right here. All right, big pitch here. Two and two, two on, one out. Over the fastball, and miss the outside corner. That's the kind of pitch that you get rung up in in double A. Now, when you're up here and you have Bryce Harper at the plate, you got to make sure it catches the plate.
All right, with Dusty start the runners with Harper at the plate. Got good speed changer. out there. Runners not going, and it's fouled out of play. You know, the way the middle of this lineup is going, it's not a surprise they wouldn't start the runners. I mean, when you have a guy hit 350 on deck, and the guy after him hitting 350, you know, you may not want to run yourself potentially out of it in an inning on a strike him out, throw him out double play with this part of the lineup coming up. Now, what's Mezzarocco talking to Castillo about here? You think? Well, a lot of it depends how big a lead you're going to be able to get. A lot of times, Tom, they're going to throw behind the first runner and get the second runner. But if Joey Votto is not holding the runner on at first base, that option's gone. Because Goodwin has way too big of a lead down here. And it really all depends on how big the lead is that your guy at second base has. Nice big 3 2 pitch. Oh boy, he has walked the bases loaded here in the third inning. That looked like another. Another change up yeah. it looked like. It just came out of his hand a little bit. I know, let, let me just ask. Mac Jang is going to come out here and talk for a second. You know, Mezzarocco came out before that pitch. Are you getting a little too cute? I'm asking. I'm not an imp implying. But after you've walked two batters in a row and you've gone three balls and two strikes, is it a little much in a kid's major league debut to think you're going to paint a 3 2 changeup on the outside corner? Well, I mean, he did on, on the 3 or on the 2 2 pitch or the 2 1 pitch, whatever it was. So. Yeah, I, I think that you don't want to get cute here. I mean, the old saying, and I'll think of the guy who, who's famous for it, is that when you get in a jam like this, you select your best pitch, you take a little bit off, and you throw it for a strike. And you hope your defense is able to make a play for you. That's basically what you've got to do right here for Zimmerman. And this young man has walked the bases loaded, has Castillo, after retiring the pitcher to start the inning. And now he faces a 350 hitter, Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman singled into left field his first time up. Continues to work out of the stretch. Straight up in the air and out of play. One ball and one strike on Zimmerman. Pacing around in that Reds dugout. Now they've already got a little activity down in that bullpen. Looks like Austin Bryce is throwing. Came back 98 and Zimmerman swings and misses. Bryce beginning to stretch out a little bit. And starting to play catch for the time being. I'm sure this batter will tell us a lot. Well, it this at bat. Castillo has already beaten Zimmerman twice with the fastball. Both foul backs. Maybe time to snap one off on him. Here comes another heater. And a tapper back up the middle. There's one, and that's a double play. Can you believe that? He walks a base is loaded and rolls up the double play to get out of the inning. So young Mr. Castillo pitches into trouble and out of trouble. They may be looking at this over in the Nationals dugout. You be the judge. Barehanded play. Made by the shortstop Peraza on the flip by Jeanette. 
And we're moving on. That's a double play. Put it in the books. team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive character building sports experience. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. What a huge double play that was for Luis Castillo. Zimmerman hitting that 2 2 pitch. Slow bouncer to the second baseman as Castillo is gone to begin the fourth. Third strikeout by Strasburg. I mean, yeah, there have been two plays in this game where, you know, you say to yourself, woulda, coulda, shoulda. One of them, I'm still convinced, is that play in the first inning on the swing and a miss by Murphy where the ball goes all the way back to the backstop. And it ricochets right back to Devin Mezzarocca. Uh -huh. Eight times out of ten, maybe nine out of ten. That ball bounces over near the dugout. The Nationals have two on, and they have Rendon coming up. Already with a run home in the first inning of Castillo's career. We'll never know. And the other one is that double play right there off the bat of Zimmerman. Two huge plays in this game. Back to the top of the order now, Hamilton. 0 for 2. And struck out and bounced to third. Meanwhile, Strasburg is a guy who's laboring here tonight. Reds already have five runs and seven hits in three plus innings. There's a slow bouncer to short. That's a good play right there by Turner. Boy, that's a nice play. Such an athletic play. Charging in and all at the same time, scooping it up and enough on a throw to get Hamilton. Well done. 
Now that's where playing a step or so closer is very important when you have Billy Hamilton up and Trey Turner's a, you know he's their version of Billy Hamilton. He may be a half a step slower but he's still very fleet of foot. But all infielders when Billy Hamilton comes to the plate they, they come in just a, a step half a step maybe a step and a half depending on who they are to protect against that exact play. And of course that could have easily been Bill, Billy Hamilton we've been watching in the major leagues. He was a shortstop. Before the Reds moved him into center field. Hadn't been all that long ago. Pretty wicked breaking ball right there by Strasburg. Snapped that one off the inside corner. Jeanette is homered and bounced out to second base. Nationals really have a nice setup here. You know, when you think about the public transportation, you know, I know they've had some issues with it here of late, but boy, by and large, it's a great transportation system. And the subway and the rail, it's clean, it's nice in most of the areas. And it drops off just about a block and a half, maybe two blocks, you know, right up the left field line. And, and for most people, that is the primary entrance into the ballpark. Now, a lot of ballparks, it's right in behind home plate. But right out there in left center field, there's no car traffic there. It's strictly foot traffic, and you walk right out to the train station. It is a really, really nice setup. Jump right on there after the game and get where you got to go. Well, oh, the train setup in Washington makes this city run. Yep. I mean, unless you have a diplomatic license plate on your car. Forget trying to find a parking spot. Forget trying to get anywhere. I mean, between the diplomats, the taxi cabs, now the Uber drivers, all that's left is, you know, some messengers on bicycles. Good walking town. Really good. Is that why you brought your walking boot? Yeah, that's why I brought it again. I mean, it's just part of my regular attire. <laughs> I wish you'd go with a different color. You were wearing that gray one there about a month ago. It's the same one. I'll talk to Kremchek about that. I ought to be getting a deal on him. Maybe I'll him let that. Jim Day and I kind of design it one time. We'll get some. That ball stung into right center by Jeanette. I mean, just line drive after line drive. A home run. And now a double and three at bats for Scooter. That's another long at bat pitch wise for the Reds against Strasburg. That was a, a seven pitch at bat before he finally put that ball in play. IGS bringing the energy. How about this rare pair of Votto and Shepler? 20 home runs each. First pair of Reds players to hit 20 or more in the first 71 games since the Hall of Fame duo of Perez and Bench in 1970. Of course, that was the same year where those two were joined by the great Lee May for the most home runs ever by a Reds trio in a single season of 119. The trio of Votto, Shevler, and Duvall are on pace to break that mark. They're on pace right now for 127. Votto was intentionally walked. So here is Duvall with two on and two out.
straight up in the air, and this will end the inning. Harper waiting on it. And the Reds are gone in the fourth. They threaten with a hit stranding two. Reds lead 5 1 after three and a half. the bottom of the fourth inning and Luis Castillo has so far shown himself to be up to the task of his major league debut in a very tough place to play I mentioned early on where he stands on the rubber if you see where he is right here that's a very far third base side of the rubber I like that whenever possible because it really helps you when you have a slider against right handers but you have to have good alignment and look where he strides I mean he is right on line to home plate a lot of guys are across their body, but Castillo is not, and that lends itself perhaps to some better control that we have seen out of Castillo, of course, in his 2017 double A ventures. He's been very good with control. Tonight, maybe a little bit off because of the nerves going sure. out there, making his major league debut. Makes sense. But I like his delivery a lot. He could use it. A quick inning here. He's facing Murphy, Rendon, and Weeder, so it never gets easy. But that's a good way to get it started. Two well, pitches, you get the out. Yeah, he finished the inning with a breaking ball to Ryan Zimmerman to get that double play. So, and that's his third pitch. It's a pitch that he learned this year. I mean, I was talking a little bit to Tony Fossis today, the Reds minor league pitching coordinator. And he travels all around, you know, and looks at all the different pitchers, and he's got a, a close bond with a lot, a lot of the Hispanic pitchers. Now, Castillo doesn't speak a lot of English yet, but he said that this guy came to the Reds as close to a top of the rotation pitcher as he has seen anybody. And that's got to make the scouting department feel awfully good. And the front office, Dick Williams and company, feel awfully good when, you know, you get a guy like this in addition to another major league pitcher, Austin Bryce, you know, for Dan Straley. Yep. Straley's had a good year for the Marlins. Don't get me wrong. It's a very typical Dan Straley year. And he set the the, buy, uh, the the bar very high last year. Of course, the Reds got him a lot of runs. But you know, I think in a rebuilding mode, boy, you get an arm like this, you can see why they like him so much. But in fact, Castillo was so impressive in spring training. There were many in both baseball operations and those that put on a uniform in spring training that you know, we're, we're pitching Castillo to be a part of the major league team in the bullpen right from the get go. Let him get his feet on the ground in the bullpen, much like the Reds did with Cody Reed and Robert Stevenson. And he probably would have been just fine, given the fact that he throws so many strikes. That would that have been a, a good alternative. High and deep in the left center field, and that one will fly out of here. Anthony Rendon with number 14. Hey, what these Nationals can play long ball on you. And Castillo is probably not used to having guys turning around a 97 mile an hour fastball. That's the one thing that I've seen out of Castillo so far. And I've, I've only watched him here for four innings. 
But you're seeing some pretty good swings on fastballs that are measured at 97 miles an hour. So he might be showing it to him a little bit. Foul ball off the bat of Weeders. I, I hear some old time scouts, and these guys are becoming fewer and fewer all the time. They'll say, you know, we don't look at the radar gun because the hitters tell you how hard you're throwing. It's a great line. It's the truth. Ran into one of your old buddies yesterday, Doug Bear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Former big league pitcher, and of course, former Reds closer. And well, what a job he's done out at Milford High School. He is their pitching coach out there. In the last two years, they have advanced deep into the tournament. In fact, this year, they shut out Moeller in the regional final this year. And Moeller, of course, is a team that is right there to win a state title seemingly every year on swinging weeders. He walked over to me as soon as I saw him. He said, when are you and Chris going to start talking about the game instead of everything else going on? I said, why don't you come up and sit where we're sitting for about six innings a night when you're down eight to one and let me know how we're looking. <laughs> hey, you got to learn to take it if you're around ball players now. Well, they're, they're never going to hold back. Oh, but I know. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> I'm just saying we've been watching a lot of games where, you know, here of late, the way the Reds starting pitching has been, and we're not telling anybody anything they don't know. Doug's a good man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ran into an old uh, pitcher from Milford. I think he started the state finals in 2002. We ran into him a little, little watering hole around the Tropicana Stadium when the Reds were down there playing against the Rays. He said, hey, I, I used to get pitching lessons from you. From you, you mean? From me. Yes. I said, really? He was about 10 or 12 at the time. He goes, yeah, and I started the state finals for Milford. I said, I hope I taught you a good curveball. Well, obviously, you did something right. His arm was straight. I guess it was OK. There's the base hit the other way by Defoe. Just called up from the minor leagues. Second time he's been up this year, Defoe has. You know, interesting, when you look at this roster, at least starting nine that the Nationals have on the field tonight. The guy you're looking at right there, De Devo, De Devo, is the only one signed as a free agent. So everybody else was drafted by one team or another. Every one of the players in this lineup tonight was a number one draft pick. How about that? I've never seen that before. Trey Turner was taken by the Padres. Of course, they've got two number one draft picks who were the first taken in the draft. And that would, of course, be Steven Strasburg at the plate and Bryce Harper. Strasburg taken in 2009, Harper taken in 2010. But every one of the players in this lineup is a number one pick. And, and, and the, the Nationals, for the most part, I mean, there's Zimmerman. He was number one in 2005. Anthony Rendon went in 2011. Harper, of course, you know when he went. He was the number one guy in 2010 coming up on his free agency. And by contrast, the Reds have one player in their lineup tonight who was the number one draft pick, and he's the guy behind the plate, Devin Mesoraka. Taken out of high school, that was in 2000. 2005, maybe. That strike three called, and that will end the inning. So, a home run by Rendon. We played four in Castillo's major league debut, and he's got a three run lead.
Series. The Reds Live kicks off at 3.30. Swing into summer on Fox Sports Ohio and Fox Sports Goes presented by Click It or Ticket. Back in spring training, Tucker Barnhart told me that one thing on his bucket list was to visit the White House. Well, he won up that one yesterday. The agency that represents him arranged a private tour of the West Wing for he and his wife, Sierra. And you see a photo from this. And he told me it was one of those things in life that was awe-inspiring. When you see the Oval Office, it really kind of hits you where you are. I was surprised by how, how tight it was in there, small hallways, and obviously the building is so old. But uh, when you really get in there, you kind of see and feel the history and, and all that stuff. So it was really cool. Tom and Grizz years back, we had a private tour of the West Wing. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I felt the same thing. You just felt the history and the power of the moment of being in there. It was uh, certainly one of the coolest things I've ever done. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Jim, wasn't it Joe Hagan that took you guys on that private tour? Yeah, you were on it too. No, I, I wasn't with the Reds then. I, I remember that uh, you guys went on that. And, and Joe Hagan, of course, is a longtime Cincinnati family, great family, out on the uh, eastern part of town. And, Drilled on the first pitch here in the inning is Suarez by Strasburg. So that's the way it starts. Let's see where he got him. Out a breaking ball that just slipped. Yep. Got him in a tricep area, maybe down on the above the elbow. Hopefully he'll be all right. But Joe Egan was the guy that set all that up. He's back in now in the new administration. He was a part of. George W. Bush's administration. And there's another huge Cincinnati tie to uh, the current administration. And that is Lindsay Reynolds. She is the chief of staff for Melania Trump here in D.C. She's been very active in politics for a long, long time. There's always been huge Cincinnati connections in some form or fashion to many administrations through the years here in D.C. And this year, no different. With Joe Hagan back and Lindsey Reynolds, among others. Well, you may have seen the graphic we showed you of Scott Shevler there, the kind of hitter he is on the first pitch of an at bat. 400 this year, and Strasburg wanted to make sure he didn't get another hit here. As he looks like he just misses outside, maybe see if he would chase. Shebu the sack fly run batted in in the four run first inning, and then the double with two outs in the third, scored on a single by Mezzarocco. Devin waiting on deck has a pair of two out RBI singles tonight. Strasburg and the Nationals I don't know Chris if you were surprised when they signed him to that long term deal prior to last season we mentioned earlier that only one time in Strasburg's career is he thrown more than 180 innings in fact only twice is he thrown more than 159 and the last time it happened was in when he went over 200 for the only time was all the way back in 2014. Now granted you know he missed some time with injuries but seemingly would you say six times he's been on the DL in his major league career. You know the Nationals have been in the playoffs three times. Since Strasburg has been a regular member of this rotation he just blows away Shepard. They've been in the playoffs three times. Since he has been in their rotation and he has only been able to start one game in the playoffs total and that was last year. You know interesting Tom it was 2009 when the Washington Nationals had the number one pick. They had the number one pick 2009 and 2010 and Strasburg was the first guy picked and he came with such. Oh ball. yeah. I mean he came out of uh, San Diego State. 
where Tony Gwynn was his college baseball coach. They got very close. And he was clearly the best amateur pitcher in the country, no question about it. When they signed him, the Nationals paid him a $15 million signing bonus. It was a record for an amateur draftee at that time. The Reds that year picked number eight in the first round. If you remember who they got, they got Mike Leak. Well, if you compare their career numbers right now, and I'm not comparing Mike Leak with Strasburg. Okay. Leak, by the way, got a bonus of a little bit over $2 million compared to 15 for Strasburg. And by the way, their old buddies growing up together. Yeah. That pitch had got a piece of a Meserocco, apparently. So they each have, well, close to the same number of wins. Leak has started 221 games. He's won 78 games. Strasburg has started about 50 fewer games, and he has won 77. So right now, Leak has more major league wins than does Strasburg. Earned run averages, Strasburg got the edge there. And winning percentage, Strasburg definitely yeah. has the edge. And he's a two time All Star. But it's just kind of interesting how that pick by the Reds turned out to be, for them, a, a, a very good pick. And of course, eventually, after everything the league did for the Reds, he ends up being traded to the Giants in exchange for Adam Duvall. So you can kind of follow the line and say, well, you know. I mean, you had to pick Strasburg if you're number one, yes. right? I was talking more, you know, uh, about the about the extension on the contract. Knowing what you know or what you've seen from Strasburg in terms of his history of injuries, you don't wish that on anybody. Well, he's extended through 2022, but he can opt out after 2019. The contract's kind of weird. Uh, this year it pays him around 18 million. Next year, 18 million. And then in 2019, it goes to 38 million. And he's throwing his best baseball now but since he's done really since his rookie year. Maybe all his injuries are behind him. Well, you, you hope they are for his sure. sake. But absolutely. I mean, from a durability standpoint, and, and, and I said something incorrectly, the only time he ever started a playoff game for the Nationals was 2014. One game. So what am I saying? How do you count on the guy being there for you when you need him the most in October? He's not been there for all but one game in 12, 14, and 16. Yeah. I know it's not his fault. Well, I think he's a poster child for injuries that relate to velocity. The air short right field and Harper coming on strong. He'll get there. And that'll be the second out of the inning. Coming up later on, we'll have our Miller Time moment brought to you by Miller Light. In their strike. Nationals have action in their bullpen for the first time tonight. They have left handed throwing. Well, Strasburg's getting near that number where they pretty much take him out of the game right around upper 90s and right around the 100 pitch mark. So Matt Grace out there getting loose. And a strike to Castillo. Running two. Atlanta leads Milwaukee that game in the fourth inning two to one Cardinals in front of the Pirates two to one that game in the third in St. Louis and gone swinging was Castillo five strikeouts for Strasburg scoreless fifth for the Reds Cincinnati in front five two.
to you by Cincinnati Children's Changing the Outcome Together. And by your local Ford dealer, Ford, go further. Always send out a big hello to those watching tonight over at Cincinnati Children's. Hope and pray you're having a great day and even better one ahead tomorrow. Big crowd on a Friday night in the nation's capital, the major league debut of Luis Castillo. What do you think so far, Mr. Welsh? I like what I, I see out of Castillo so far. I mean, you know, he's got a really good breaking ball. He's got a good change up. That came as advertised. His fastball, the same as advertised, too. I like his delivery. It's nice and clean. You know, even the Reds minor league guys will tell you, they didn't have to do a whole lot with him mechanically. He was there for you. I'll tell you one thing, though. You brought up a name, and there are, there are a lot of fans watching tonight that are old enough to remember as he starts ball one to turn it. It's a big inning now for Castillo. It's a top of the order here in the fifth. He has a three run lead. It's a good change up right there. You know, Danny Darwin, who the Reds brought on board, and is the pitching coach down there at Pensacola. Boy, what a competitor. You know, we were talking about Tom Seaver earlier. Now, Tom Seaver is one of the great pitchers of all time. But there was a long time where Danny Darwin was among the best right handed setup men in all the major league baseball down there with the Houston Astros. That back up through the middle. It's going to be a tough play. Can Jeanette make it? And not in time. Turner runs too well. So the Reds are very high on Danny Darwin. Well, they should be. I mean, the guy did the nearly impossible, which has played more than 20 years in the major leagues. Well, he was a gamer, too. Yes, he was a gamer. Wow, today was he good. Big strong right hander out of Bonham, Texas. Bonham Bullet. He also had the nickname of Dr. Death. <laughs> I remember those days when they they dropped that on him. Doesn't look like Castillo is going to be easy to run on either. Now, Trey Turner will take a shot, but they're down by three. I don't know if this is really a running situation here anyway with a, a pull left handed hitter in the batter's box. You want to leave that right side open a little bit. If you're wondering where that nickname, by the way, Dr. Death came from for Danny Darwin, Nolan Ryan gave him that nickname because of how tough Darwin was and all the fights that he had apparently won that nobody ever knew about. Well, the other guy knew about him. I don't know what happened there. I mean, that wasn't a delayed steal. Yes, it was. Yeah, a little bit. Field. Yeah, but it had a little more to it than just. Well, uh, yeah, it is. And what a running instructor will tell you on a delayed seal is you take three hops so that you don't let anybody know that you're going. And oftentimes you're trying to steal it. He does it perfectly right there. You're stealing it on the middle infielder. He didn't get it on the middle infielder that time. I think he just caught Azaraka by surprise. It's still in base number 20. Rely on. There he goes. Somebody yelling either from the dugout or when you take a hops like that, you'd never have anybody yell that. Smart play. Right, he's in scoring position now. It's two balls and a strike on Goodwin. Broken bat and then he hits. Oh my 
Davy Loeb's down there. Ooh. He wants to rub it so bad. And he will. That brought him back to his old days when he used to play against the Reds. Yeah, he, he'd get drilled every now and again. I wouldn't again. be surprised if Big Cactus Jack Billingham didn't get him a couple of times. Look at Chris Byer. He wants to laugh. That ball smoke. Woo. He was a good player. Oh. Punch. Popped up and out of play. He was the one guy though that perhaps drew the the true ire of the, the Reds, you know, and then really because he was a stolen base guy. He would get on and well, there was a famous game where you know, Lopes is stealing bases and the Dodgers are beating the Reds back in the 70s. And, you know, there it's like eight or ten run lead, and that would ultimately lead to a brawl between the teams. 2-2. Two -two. Castillo's got to find a way to start throwing some strikes. He's walked four in the game, big league debut or not. And he has got the most fearsome trio of hitters in the league on one team coming up. Well, the Reds are getting their bullpen going again. He's just simply flying open right here. He's got to stay together. Here comes the fastball. You know, the first thing you notice when you make the jump from the minor leagues, especially double A, to the major leagues, is the incredible shrinking strike zone. Because the corners that you might get down there in the Southern League, you're not getting here. And the hitters that are chasing those pitches just a couple of inches off the plate because you throw so hard are not chasing here. And that would be one reason why he's have a little more difficulty than normal getting that ball in the zone. And the Reds have Michael Lorenzen now throwing in the ball. Mac Jenkins out for a lengthy visit. 84 pitches. And the first two are on an infield hit and a walk. It's five walks for Castillo. A triple A this year had walked a total or double A, I keep saying double A. He had walked 13 batters all year. Backing up what Chris was talking about. So now Harper. A ground out to second base and a walk in the third inning. Reds lead by three. We're just in the fifth inning. Huh, those gnats are bothering me, Bryce. They're getting me too, way up here, about the 15th floor. It is a microcosm of what the game of baseball is becoming. He has five strikeouts, he's walked five, and he's given up two home runs. One ball and one strike. Swing and a foul ball back, one and two. You know, 
I imagine that Castillo so far in his young pitching career has been taught to keep the ball down. But I think he's got enough life on that four seam that he can occasionally and eventually will learn how to run it up the ladder a little bit. He's throwing the ball right by these guys chest high. Try to get Harper to chase there up and away. Now this was the same count where he got Zimmerman to bounce into the double play. We talk all the time when you start getting runners on base. You do not want to go to three and two in a count. Well, he got Zimmerman on a slider but he hasn't thrown too many sliders to lefties yet. Two two on Harper. In fact, really against left handers, he's become a two pitch pitcher. And I don't think he's shaking off Mesoraco much. And that may, by, may be by design. You know what they've gone over in the scouting report. But he's got enough snap on that breaking ball that he should be able to roll it up there to a, some of these lefties just to let them know he's got three pitches. Well, he threw a, a 3 2 change up to Harper the last time and walked him. He just threw a 2 2 change up to Harper for ball three. It's a 98 mile per hour fastball that's fouled away. Three balls, two strikes. And Castillo, the payoff pitch. Straight up in the air. He's beating him every time with that fastball. Every time. Of course, that's precisely why I'm wondering on 2 2 in this at bat and on 3 2 in the last at bat with two on and nobody out, why you're throwing a changeup. I mean, I think you live and learn. You know, there's, there's no perfect. Sequence and perfect strategy to get hitters out. I mean, even sometimes you throw a great pitch and a great count, and it makes all the sense in the world. The guy gets a base hit or even hits a home run out of it. I just think, don't but, you think though, we're just giving guys too much credit though at the plate? It's a natural thing most most pitchers do, and I think that when you go over scouting reports, they have a tendency to glorify hitters a little too much also. So you get one out, and now you face Zimmerman, who had a single in the first inning. And then with the bases loaded and one out in the third, he bounced into a double play, starting with a bouncing ball to Scooter Jeanette. Around out there at second base, and this is another double play ball. Are you kidding me? How about it again for Mr. Castillo? Second time he gets the league's leading hitter Zimmerman. Once with the bases loaded, this time with two on, to an inning ending double play. Yes, sir.
Well, a lot of, how about that? A big hug from Mac Jenkins down there, which certainly leads you to believe that in this Major League debut for Luis Castillo, it's over for him tonight. But you go back to the third inning, walked three batters in a row before he got Zimmerman to end the inning on the double play, and then in the just fifth, two on, one out, Zimmerman again. Inning over. Five innings. He did walk five. He allowed five hits. Struck out five. Two runs is a bottom line. Now, you talk about competing tonight. Look, this is the first time we've seen this young man. As Matt Brace takes over on the mound with the Reds leading five to two here in the sixth inning. And I think Castillo showed you a little something as far as being a competitor out there on the mound tonight. He didn't back down from anybody. No question about it. Hamilton is retired for the fourth straight time. One out in the sixth inning. Take a look at the numbers in the race. Strasburg out of there. Now third year in the big leagues for this young man. He's been in 11 games now, including tonight. Not a strikeout pitcher. 28 year old. That was recalled on oh, about 10 days ago. Good breaking ball near a strike. I don't want anybody to think that, that we were ever comparing as that ball's in the air to left. This would be the second out of the unit. But we, but we brought up earlier the expectations. You know, Tom Seaver's name came up. You know, Paul Evans, our statistician, all of a sudden starts scribbling down some numbers. And this isn't to denigrate in any way, shape, or form Stevens Cross. He's had bad luck with it. But to give you an idea, more importantly, about Seaver. The average number of innings pitched per year for Steven Strasburg in his career, the average number per season has been 132 innings. 132. Seaver's average, 276 per year. Well, if you always wanted to play catch at Great American Ballpark, who hasn't? Well, here's your opportunity. 
catch in the outfield before Billy Hamilton and the Reds take on the Cubbies next weekend. Register today for the College Advantage Family Catch at Reds.com slash catch. A lot of Reds fans here in the nation's capital tonight. So a lot of folks on the plane flying in here today coming from Cincinnati. Yeah, they're a little tougher to pick out here than they were down in Tampa. Yeah, you're right. But they're here. All right, so five innings. So far, it would be good enough for a win, but we have a long way to go in this one for Mr. Castillo. Taking over on the mound is Michael Lorenzo. Rendon and Weeders, the trio coming up for Dusty Baker's team. Murphy tonight came in batting 346. He's 0 for 2, struck out swinging and bounced to second base. Faces plays long ball to make it a five to three game. That happened to Lorenzen. The first game of this road trip, the first batter he faced down in Tampa Bay. Robertson got him for a home run. Well, it, it's a cutter that he throws right here that he, you know, comes in at 92 miles an hour. He didn't see a lot of depth on that pitch. And that is a laser beam of a home run. Boy, that ball didn't get very high at all. You know, Lorenzen has added that pitch, that cutter, to his repertoire of pitches. He's got a very good fastball, upper 90s when he throws it right. He's got a nice little slider as well. That may be the cutter right there, and that had some good action on it. I mean, a cutter's like a slider. A little bit harder, doesn't break as much. But when you hang it out over the center of the plate, it gets hit every bit as hard. So the Reds twice have had four run leads in this game, and now it's as close as it's been, well, really the entire night since the Reds got a four spot in the top of the first inning. Five to one, went to five to two in the fourth, five to three here in the last to the sixth. Two and two, the count on Rendon. has seen a season so far where the starting pitching has been not very good but the bullpen has been very good we've said really all along and I know that Brian is as aware of this as everybody that follows the Reds and it's no secret that eventually your bullpen begins to get worn down a little bit and you hope you're not getting to that point here in June. Strike on Weeders. 
who struck out swinging twice tonight. And look at the number of innings pitched. Reds by far the leaders. Basically, when you go down the bullpen in the Reds bullpen, you, you've got a really good chance of being in the ball game. If you're Wandy Peralta, you have about a 50% chance of being in the game that night. Because that's about he has been in about 50% or nearly around 45 really of the Reds game so far this year. Pretty good hitter. That's against the shift. The Reds have a big shift put on the left handed batter. He just bounces one through. So enter Lorenzen has been home run walk single. That's one of those in the old days, you know, when before the shifts, you'd have said to yourself, when shifts were rare, let me correct myself. When, when shifts were rare, you'd see a pitch like that, you'd say, if you're going to put a shift on a guy, why are you throwing him down and away? You're going to play him the pole, pitch him the pole. Right. Yeah. Now you might look out for the bunt right here from Defoe. The Reds certainly appear to be debating it. Well, I don't think there's any debate on Defoe's part. They do have Stephen Drew in the on-deck circle. And so. I say debating it because you know, Lorenzen's a good enough athlete, at least for that first pitch. They're letting Votto stay home. Well, Lorenzen's job is usually the, le the this side right here. Votto comes shooting in. But the pitcher's got to cover the third baseline. Votto was... 15 feet behind the bag on that first pitch. Well, the Renzen just doesn't look right out there right now. His body language is normally one of a very confident pitcher. Let's see if he can find some of that here. They look at third, and they get the out at first, give a sacrifice to Defoe, advancing the runners. That's a nice play made there by Studer Jeanette. That was not nice play by Jeanette. Game. Really, by the time you look and then make a decision, you're never going to get a runner at third. You make your mind up before you feel it. As you're kind of in your head, you've got a little timer going. How big of a lead did that runner have? How fast is he? How quickly I can get to the ball? Can I get it and spin and get the guy at third base? If you have to look first, you're never going to get the man. But the Reds are able to get it out. Well, here comes Steven Drew. Well, the Nationals were debating looking at this again. They saw that and they said, no, we're not going to do that. Stephen Drew, 34 years old now. The Nationals brought him in last year, of course, for a long time in Arizona. He's an everyday shortstop. Went to Boston and the Yankees before the Nationals last year. Drew can still swing the bat a little bit. He's swinging a hot bat right now. Nine for his last 17. That ball driven into deep left field. Caught by Duvall. Tagging and scoring is Rendon, who drew a walk in the inning. And now all of a sudden it's down to a one-run ball game. Drew the sack fly RBI. A nice catch by Duval who went a lot farther to go get that ball than we show you right here just the last five steps. So 
Now back to the top of the order in Turner who has struck out and walked and has an infield hit along with a stolen base. Race goes a perfect inning in relief of Strasburg out of the Nationals bullpen. We are only in a sixth inning. And it's a 5 4 game. Lorenzen's given up two after entering with a three run lead. Tying run out there at second base for the Nationals. Two outs in the inning. Two and two the count. Lorenzen v. Turner. Reds get a break on the final out. A rocket right at bottom. Not a good inning for Lorenzen. Reds lead down to one.
500. They're a game and a half behind front running Milwaukee in the central. Right, a couple of changes. Let's let you know what's going on. Three of them total. Ryan Rayburn, he was with the Reds in camp this year. He's now in left field. Goodwin moves from left field to center field. The night is over for Defoe, and now taking over on the mound is Blake Trinan. Right hander. Trinan misses ball one. 1 and 0. Oh, trying and facing Duvall, Suarez, Shevlin. Trying and a busy man, and this has not been a good Washington bullpen. There are people that will tell you if this guy, this team had a closer, and make no mistake, they tried to go out and buy among the very best all out on the market this year, and they couldn't convince him to come here, especially Jansen now with the Dodgers. Well, it is the one missing piece definitely for Dusty Baker's team. And they will, I imagine, before the trade deadline, figure out how to bolster up that bullpen. And that one looped into center field. That'll be a base hit for Duvall. The, the Nationals were the team of any team out there that had the Reds made the decision during the prior regular season instead of waiting to move Aroldis Chapman at the end of that season. This was a team that wanted him the most. The Nationals really wanted Chapman. I mean, look at those numbers. We're talking about a team in first place with those numbers. By far in first place in their division. And really, when you're as far in first place as they are, even though it is late June and not late August, you're thinking about how your team looks in the playoffs. You're thinking about what you're going to do in a short series when you're facing, you know, three stud pitchers on the other team. And when you do get a lead from the seventh or eighth inning, you know, they've coughed it up so many times here that, you know, you're trying to make your team a playoff tough team. And you know how Dusty likes bullpens. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure he is chewing the ear of Mike Rizzo. Daily. There's a double play ball. Off the bat of Suarez. Reds and the Cubbies get together at Great American Ballpark next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't miss a Central Division matchup. Love to have you come down. Log on to Reds.com for tickets. And one on Scott Shevlin. Bullpen tonight's been so far so good. It's only the second inning of work, but Brace had a one, two, three inning, and after a leadoff single, Trinan rolls up the double play. Hey, when you're dead last in bullpen, you find every little victory you can find. You can rest assured, Dusty Baker's thinking, all right, we just got a chance now to get through two scoreless innings. Behind a very poor start out of Steven Strasburg. I mean, but here, sometimes, you know, nowadays, I don't know what it is, but I'm watching Blake trying and throw. He's throwing his fastball 99 miles an hour, and he has an earned run average of six. Somehow, that just, to me, that doesn't compute. We've seen a lot of those guys. Well, somebody turned up the radar gun, and they didn't tell the hitters. But you know you, you bring this up a lot and I think you're dead on you know I, I think after a while as they're throwing harder and harder younger and younger you know when you and I were growing up and playing not whole baseball and you had some you know high school kid maybe throwing 80 miles an hour it looked like it was fired out of a can sure was. now when you're going to these you know, like you were going with your son Mac and you're going to some of these showcase tournaments 
you got 25 high school guys throwing 95 miles an hour. Yeah. So yeah. the high school guys that are the really exceptional players and on to college, or maybe they go from really good high school program to the major leagues, they've been looking at 90 plus for years. I think that's a valid point. I mean, it only seems natural that that would happen. Your eye, your reaction time. And that's strike three to Chevy. Middle of the seventh, Reds lead by a run. Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. Experience every Reds home game for just $29.99 a month. With the Reds' top six ballpark pass, your tickets are delivered right to your mobile device, and the pass automatically renews each month so you never miss a game. I mean, it's a great idea. Learn more at Reds.com slash top six. It's the way to do it. Well, we've seen him before. Wandy Peralta takes the mound. Game number 33 for Peralta. Mention how often he pitches. He does pitch in about 46% of the games the Reds have played somewhere in that neighborhood. Last two outings had not been kind to Peralta. You know, and he was asked if maybe fatigue was part of the problem that he's had the last couple of times. He doesn't think so. Sometimes pitchers are the last ones to know. Well, you, put make, it, you make that decision by watching him rather than asking him. We'll put it this way. His first 30 appearances of the year, he allowed a total of eight runs. In his last two games, he's given up five runs. And he just hasn't been as you and I talked about this even before the the last two appearances. His stuff just hasn't seemed, and it doesn't mean because he's getting worn out, but he just doesn't seem as sharp. Well, he's still not walking a lot of batters, you know. I I, I just think that. Well, there goes that. Five to one lead is gone, and the bullpen's given up three of them in one inning and one batter. Right, four home runs of the night for the Nationals. And of course that means that Luis Castillo, who worked the front five innings giving up only two runs, cannot get his first major league win. I'll tell you, this kid Brian Goodwin, 
He had a bad spring. It cost him a job on the bench to start the season off. Michael Taylor ended up taking his job there. And except for tonight with Defoe in the lineup, Taylor and Goodwin have been starting a lot lately. And Goodwin has been really playing some good baseball. Two home runs and two walks. Now Bryce Harper the bat. Nothing in one on the left handed batting right fielder who's 0 for 2 is drawn a walk. Harper has fared well against left handed pitching so far this year. He's been a 299 batter. Has 20 hits and 67 at bats with two home runs. Doesn't get a lot of extra base hits against left handed pitching. And there are a lot of it that you can make him look really bad as Peralta just did right there. Yeah, the problem with facing the Nationals though that they've got more than just Bryce Harper working. I mean, he's taking an over on the night. He does have a walk. But he's had a lot of support around him. Here's Zimmerman. You know, you look at the job that Castillo did against a trio of Harper, Zimmerman, and Murphy. Harper went 0 for 2 with a walk. Zimmerman went 1 for 3, but bounced into two enormous double plays. That's a fair ball, and that's an out. Zimmerman is arguing that it was a foul ball. Maybe he was saying that he thinks because Mezzarocco was in foul territory when he fielded it, and he's pointing to where it is. That's normally the best way to have a quick night at the ballpark is to use your bat to point something out to the umpire. We cover that in the rule of the week. And that's baseball rules academy.com. That's a big league website you got going on there. I'm glad you like it and use it. I do. Baseball rules academy.com. Check it out. Before too long, they'll have you speaking at one of these conventions like they do in so many of these hotels in and around D.C. You, you know why I'll never do that? Because somebody will add, pr propose a situation, a play that happened maybe at their kids' little league game, and they want me to give the ruling, and I'll say, "Hold on, let me look it up." You know what? If they're paying you some big league cash to come in there and talk <laughs> about it, don't give me that lift, and you won't be there. Give me a break. Maybe you ought to be my agent. It's always a cut somewhere. Three balls and a strike to the left handed batting Murphy. Three and two. So the Reds had a five to two lead after young Mr. Castillo left this one. And the normally dependable duo of Lorenzen and Peralta. Have given up three in the last two innings. And Mr. Castillo still able to smile and joke around down there. There's a two out of one. And now you face a right handed batting Rendon. Now the Reds make a pitching change here. Yes, they do. The event of the summer will hit South Beach. Baseball's biggest stars take the field for Major League Baseball's 88th All Star game. That comes your way July the 11th only. On Fox. So the Reds are going to go to the bullpen. Peralta, last two thirds of an inning, gives up the game tying home run and a two out walk. This will be our skyline chili call to the bullpen. Drew Storin.
Jumping on Steven Strasburg right from the get-go. A home run by Scooter Jeanette. Part of a four-run opening inning. Including big two-out hits by Mezzarocco and Peraza. The Major League debut of Luis Castillo. Rolled up two big double plays, both off the bat of Ryan Zimmerman. Finished up five innings, two runs in his big league debut. But in the sixth, Murphy a home run off Lorenzen. They would get a run closer on a sack fly and then tie the game against Wandy Peralta in the seventh inning on the home run by Goodwin. So now it's Drew Storen, who at one time was the main man out of the Nationals bullpen when he first came to the major leagues. Uh, for many years in a row, he was a closer here. He had 48 saves his second major league season. Overall, he had 116 saves for this Nationals team. Well, he's a very different pitcher now than he was in, isn't he? Yeah. Now, when he was at the peak of his game, and we're talking, you know, five or six years ago anyway, we're talking about a guy that was an extremely hard thrower. But he's a smart player. He's learned to adapt. He's put a lot of different wrinkles into his pitching repertoire just to be able to get hitters out now. A little bit of sidearm, sometimes a hesitation pitch. Rendon looks at a breaking ball, and it's one ball and two strikes. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning of a 5-5 game. Reds had a lead of 4-0 and 5-1. But the Nationals have scored four unanswered. There's a fly ball to right, and Storen takes care of Rendon to end the inning. But a game tying home run by Goodwin sends us to the eighth, tied at five. Plays out, Mr. Pecoro. Obviously, hoping that you're spot on here. Although, so far, it's been the worst bullpen in baseball that has outpitched one of the better bullpens in baseball. 
Both teams. Starter comes out after five innings. And drilled on the first pitch by Trinan is Mezzarocco. That's a third red that's been hit by a pitch in this game tonight. Suarez and that was no cheapy either. This was a fastball that got him flush. Oh. Right on the elbow. That one hurt. He got hit early in the game, you may remember. That one was not flush like this one was. So we have Peraza and then the pitcher's spot. Aris Mendy Alcantara is standing in the on deck circle. See if Peraza can get on and give Alcantara a chance to either move some runners over or bring them on in. I think Trinan wanted to know whether Peraza might show his hand. With a possible bunt attempt, because there is nobody that would throw over to first, thinking Mezzarocco is going to run. Now, Peraza clearly wasn't bunting for a sacrifice with that attempt. Doesn't mean he won't be on this attempt. That's a pretty quick catch and release right there by Daniel Murphy. Pretty nice play. Murphy decides ahead of time that he's just going to catch this ball and spin and throw to first base and take the shot. That maybe Mezzarocco was off a little bit too far, but. You know, this might be one of those situations where. You know, when you carry three catchers, one of the luxuries it provides you is late in the game in a tight game like this, if you have somebody on your bench you can run. You know, you've got two additional catchers sitting on the bench over there. Of course, when you have as many guys as the Reds do right now in their bullpen. Having a third catcher makes it nearly impossible to pinch run for anybody. Right. Uh, that's exactly it's, it's the the conundrum of you know having too many and too little. This will be handled by the shortstop Turner. Two outs. So Storin goes one third of an inning. Retires the only batter he faces. So far, this Nationals bullpen is an out of way 
from three perfect three scoreless innings. Dusty has not seen a lot of that. Now Mike Maddox out for a quick visit before Billy Hamilton steps in there. Hamilton a hitless game. He's 0 for 4. We're tied at 5. We're in the eighth inning in D.C. Opening game of a three game series. It's a 4 10 Eastern Time start tomorrow. Homer Bailey makes his 2017 debut against Joe Ross. Neither starter in the next two days for the Nationals have been particularly good this year. Ross has an ERA of almost 6. Tanner Roark, who starts here on Sunday. Now, we've seen him very good in the past. But so far this year, an ERA almost five. So, Bailey tomorrow, Feldman on Sunday, and then the makeup game in St. Louis on Monday. We've got to find out who the Reds are going to start in that game. Amir Garrett was a scheduled starter. He was sent out today. Hamilton's 0 for 5, and the Nationals are bad in the eighth inning in a 5 5 game. For only $12 for tickets, visit Reds.com. I'm Jim Day. It's been a struggle for Billy Hamilton at the plate, now over his last 18, and a struggle off the field as well. And many of us have gone through this. Hamilton was bothered big time in Tampa by a wisdom tooth that was acting up. So much so that yesterday he had to spend his off day getting that wisdom tooth pulled. And then slept most of the day. Said he felt much, much better today. Hasn't paid dividends at the plate, but we all go through it. That dreaded trip to the dentist. Oh, man, that's no fun. That's never any fun. Well, Billy, the final out in that eighth inning, and here comes Blake Wood in the bottom of the eighth in a 5 5 game. And the fifth pitcher of the night for the Reds. Castillo was in line for a win in this major league debut. Five innings allowed only two runs against this 
high octane Nationals offense, but it's been the bullpen, which has not been a story most of the year. It's been a very rock solid Reds bullpen. But Lorenzen gave up two. Peralta gave up the game tying home run to Goodwin. And now it's Wood to face the latter third in the order. And his first two pitches have been nowhere near the strike zone in this tie game. So many of these relievers were not around when Dusty Baker was the manager of the Reds team. In fact, I don't think there's a single one of them down there. And you're only talking about three years ago. And here's strike. Start the inning. Leadoff walk, and they're going to let leaders stay in the game over there and run. Ryan Rayburn will bat. And remember, now you have the pitcher spot next. Rayburn's batting for the first time. We saw this guy in spring training. Nice young man. He is, and he's got a lot of power, and that's why he's on this ball club. The, the Nationals have been collecting a lot of those transition players. Players have been released by other teams. They stockpile them down the Meyer leagues in case they need them. And there's a base hit in the right center field. You know the other thing about those those, those kind of players, Chris, is on a on a team where those guys know they're not going to be regular players. They've accepted their roles. So you've got guys like Rayburn, Stephen Drew. You know, they've had a lot of success and been in a lot of pressure situations. And, and, you know, they're okay with coming up there and getting one and bat late in the game. Right. And now here's another guy, Adam Lynn. How many times have we seen this guy get big hits through the year? He's announced as a pinch hitter. But the Reds have a left-hander getting ready down in the bullpen, Tony Sangrani, to face him. So Blake Wood comes in, does not retire a batter. So with two on.
single. And he's out of the game. Taking over on the mound is left-hander Tony Cedrone, his 12th game of the year. Just over a month on the disabled list. Adam Lynn is certainly not the kind of guy you would expect to be asked to put down a sacrifice. This guy's just a good hitter. And this is another example of what we were talking about. You know, you see his numbers as a pinch hitter, but he's had a very good year, period. And he's not all that far off Scooter Jeanette kind of production yeah. in a lot less at bats. He's at 97 at bats and has 26 runs batted in. Ball one away from Sengrani. I mean, think about that. We're talking about Jeanette knocking in 30 plus runs and 150 at bats. This guy's not even to 95 trips and has 26 driven in. And look at that on base percentage. Bottom of the eighth inning, and the Nationals try to take the lead for the first time in the game tonight. Two on, none out. Running ahead at one and two on Lind. Struck him out. One out in the inning. Yeah, Sincrani's going back to really what got him here in the first place, which is the high four seam fastball. You can see how late Lind was on that pitch. Now the leadoff man, Turner, one of three in the game, has been on base twice. He has an infield hit, a stolen base, has drawn a walk, ball one. Taylor is a talented young player. Right handed batter. Thought we might see him up there and try and move the runners along with a butt. But they go with the left handed batter, Lind, after announcing him, don't want to lose him. I think some of that, Tom, is maybe the difficulty in trying to get a Synchrony high fastball down. I mean, Dusty Baker knows Synchrony, and he saw him at his best. When he was racking up strikeouts and throwing four seamers right by guys at high in the zone. And sometimes that can be a tough pitch to get down. Didn't want to pop it up into a double play or something like that, maybe. And the other part about it is that sometimes it's the move you don't make that turns out to be the best move. What I mean is, is Blake Wood comes in the game, he walks a batter, and he gives up a hit. Do you want him leaving the game? When you announce Lind as a pinch hitter, he's coming out of the game. Full foul. He may have been coming out of the game either way. Good point. Three balls and two strikes on Turner. Left-handed batter due up next, so this inning belongs to Tony. Trying to send us to the ninth, tied at five. 
And he's got back to back strikeouts. You know, and both times the strikeout pitch was a pitch that was out of the zone. That was the bread and butter pitch for Tony Cingrani when he came to the major leagues as a starter. He didn't break in his first, first time he came to the big leagues. They used him in relief, but the next year he was a starter and a well, good one. He moved through the system as a starter. Yeah. Strike one on Goodwin. And what makes Cingrani's fastball so very difficult to hit when it's upstairs okay. like that. He's got kind of a low arm angle anyway and the backspin on the ball may not be as much as if a guy throws straight overhand but the ball doesn't sink. It may run from side to side but even when he throws it down in the zone the ball doesn't sink. That's why he gets hit hard when he's down around the knees but doesn't get hit hard when he's up around the, the letters. And you, that's the kind of thing you need to identify on pitchers early on. Compare the swings that Goodwin has had against Singrani against those that he's had previous in this ball game. Popped up, should end the inning. What a great job by Tony Singrani. Comes on with two on and nobody out, retires three in a row. Well done. Fox Sports Ohio join us for Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing and of course tomorrow we'll get underway at 3.30 Eastern it will mark the 2017 debut Chris of Homer Bailey. Yeah, he was in the clubhouse today getting ready for his start tomorrow and you know let us everybody who would be interested in here that his rehab went great his arm feels fine and I expect him to kind of pick up midseason here may not be you know as strong physically as far as the the endurance of being out there for a long time but the Reds need some solid starting pitching and obviously with the kind of money that they've dedicated to, to, to Homer Bailey they hope this, that starts tomorrow. Amy Romero the lefty on. And the Reds have Jeanette Fado Duvall. Here against Romero, his 32nd game. Averages better than a strikeout per nine innings. League hitting 256 against him. Came over from Tampa Bay just prior to the start of spring training this year.
Reds, uh, the Nationals have 20 saves. They have blown 12 saves. Only bring that up because it gives you an idea of what a mess it's been trying to find somebody to close out games. High fly ball into left field and caught by Rayburn. Jeanette clear it nearly leaving the yard the other way. of the batter nothing in one Joey is one for three has a single the run scored is drawn a walk let's have action down in their bullpen Sengrani came on to get the final three innings they have their closer Rysele Iglesias naturally warming up should they take the lead and Bryce a right hander warming up right alongside him Pitch right there. It got in on Votto. Two out. Ball and one strike on Duval. Uh, you can see what Romero does. He likes to pitch up. He throws very hard, high 90s, all the way to 100 miles an hour. He doesn't have much of a breaking ball at all. I mean, one out of every 10 pitches will drop a curveball, but mostly it's fastball cutter. Popped up to the right side and a one, two, three inning for Romero. Well, the Nationals have their big three coming up Harper, Zimmerman, Murphy in a 5 5 game.
Kroger. Stop by your neighborhood Kroger to say big store-wide. Great food, low prices at Kroger. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Toyota. For over 30 offers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. We are going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Bryce Harper to lead things off in a 5-5 game. He has a pair of game-ending home runs already this season. Both of them teaming against Philadelphia. It's Sengrani. And he was trying to end it with that cut. As soon as it left the bat, no doubt about that one. That one, too. Yeah, you notice where those pitches were, though, height-wise. They're down around the fives. And that's where he really likes to drop that bat head. A rare breaking ball right there for Sigrani. Throws it in the dirt. Sengrani did a marvelous job in relief of Wood in the eighth inning. 2-1, nobody out, but tied three straight batters. Now, you got to believe this is the only batter Sengrani's is going to face here in the ninth. You have right-handed batters Zimmerman, although Murphy's a left-handed batter, too. Perhaps if Sengrani retires this leadoff, man, they'll leave him in there. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I agree, Tom. I think that'll be the case. I, I just don't see the lefty-righty matchup that compelling against Singrani. High fly ball in a straightaway center field. This will stay in the yard, or will it? Yes, it will. It continues to carry. To carry. Well, here comes Brian Price. We thought after getting a left-handed batter, knowing there's a left-handed batter next. Harper wasn't sure. So Sengrani retires all four batters he faces. He did a great job tonight. Great job. Struck out two of the four batters. So Bryce will come on to face. The right-handed batting Zimmerman and the left-handed batting Murphy is after him. 5-5 five, five game. Far the most effective Reds reliever here tonight. I mean, it's not even close. Lorenzen gave up two. Peralta gave up a run. Storm retired the only batter he faced. Wood was bailed out by Sengrani, and even with a right handed batting, Zimmerman coming up and a lefty on deck, Brian Price is going to bring in the rookie, Austin Bryce. One out, 5 5 game, bottom of the ninth inning.
And we talked about Castillo coming over from the Marlins in the offseason January to be exact when Perez traded Straley down to the Marlins. Austin Bryce was in that deal as well. Along with a young man named Isaiah White, minor leaguer. Castillo made his major league debut here tonight and had the Reds normally dependable bullpen deliver the goods. He'd be celebrating, or close to celebrating, a win right now. Well, it's tough to expect a win when you go five innings. Yep. And that's one reason why wins are less and less a determination as to the quality of the year a pitcher starting pitcher has. It's a base hit by Zimmerman, so he represents the winning run. You know, Chris, I think that, you know, and you and I talk about this a lot. I think that's a thing that's been deciphered out of it more than anything else. Is that in the history of baseball, the great pitchers won games because they pitched late in the game. Exactly. And I, I think it's not so much anymore that, you know, the great ones are lasting long enough, as you pointed out, to still get wins. Guys like Clayton Kershaw and Max Scherzer and, and on and on and on and on. But so, so many times today, you get to 100 pitches in six innings. And yeah, it is tough to win a game. Well, now you're Murphy. Gro you're grooming pitchers to go as hard as they can, as long as they can. With the emphasis on hard. Dangerous hitter here. Good low ball hitter. Nice pitch. Straight up in the air. Two away in the inning. A solo home run, a fly ball to right. He's walked twice, scored twice. Reds pitchers tonight have walked eight batters, they've struck out eight batters. One and one on Rendon. By much. Three balls and a strike on the dangerous Rendon. Zimmerman has not run particularly well at first. Big swing and a foul ball out of play. Now, nearly all bets are off. With the count having gone to three and two, because Zimmerman will get started on the pitch.
Ball four. Is that a three-two breaking ball there from Bryce? I thought it may have been. I, I was actually watching from up here and not on the monitor. It's hard to. This is one of two ballparks where we sit at the very top of the stadium. So pitch recognition is a lot different here and in Pittsburgh than it is anywhere else. All right, winning run now in scoring position. Here's Weeders, the catcher. Strike one. I'll tell you one thing about Bryce's fastball. That's got some serious action on it. Weeders was the one that punched that ball down the left field through the third base side when they had him shifted way around against Michael Lorenzo. They're playing much more conventional defense against him this time. Last ball down and in a ball and a strike. And they're also pitching him inside. off to the third base side out of play. So now Bryce ahead at one ball and two strikes. of the ninth inning tie game two on two out one two pitch on Weeders and here it comes foul ball Weeders struck out each of his first two times up against the youngster Castillo he had a single against Lorenzo that when he flipped into left field in the sixth and drew a walk from Blake Wood leading off the eighth. Zimmerman carries a winning run here in the ninth. Two outs. Spun that one up there at 80 miles per hour and had Zim Weeders badly fooled, but he was able to get a piece of it to hang in there. The inning. Nasty pitch right there by Bryce. And we're off to extra innings. 5 5 game in DC.
we're entering extra frames tonight. Where for each team? Identical. Two wins, four defeats. Now, Matt Alvarez has now been around for 12 years, at least parts of 12 major league seasons with Houston, Baltimore, Boston, Arizona, Cleveland, back with the Astros where he started. Last couple of seasons, he worked out of the bullpen with the Chicago White Sox, and this year now 26 games for the Nationals. Pretty good numbers. have Suarez, Shebler, Mezzarocco against Alvarez here in the top of the 10th inning. Boy, it's amazing. Doesn't matter what ballpark you're in or where you are. When you go to extra innings in a Major League Baseball game, it is staggering the number of people that leave the ballpark. And this is on a Friday night. Well, it's not. I don't think it's a a matter of extra innings it's a matter of what time it is. I guess I, I just make the point you, you and I've talked about this so many times before I, you know and this is one of the great challenges for Rob Manford we were talking about this on the bus coming over here today I mean you know in an NFL game if they went to overtime how many people would be leaving I don't care what time you started the game. And if you especially on a Friday night I mean they play on Monday night and Thursday night and Sunday night. And then in an NBA basketball game, I don't go to a lot of games, so you know maybe somebody out there could say, "Hey, believe me, it's going on there too." But when you're playing overtime, and this is a, uh, this is something that for those of us who love this game so very, very much, these are the kinds of things that that baseball really needs to start looking into. I know Rob Manfred made some comments just within the last day or two that, you know, in in some surveys, nothing scientific, but the fans are OK with the number of strikeouts that are accumulating in baseball Chris where the you know walks and strikeouts and home runs are pretty much the overwhelming majority of plays and games now there's one out in the inning yeah it's really not unusual we've had a couple of innings that we commented on it after the innings are over where you know the inning may be a six batter inning. And nobody puts the ball in play. Yeah. We've seen three walks and three strikeouts. I mean, you look at the, the Reds pitching, for example, tonight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine walks and nine strikeouts. And they've given up, what, one, two, three, four home runs? Mm -hmm. All right, now the batter, Shevlin, certainly capable of Breaking this 5 5 tie in this 10th inning. Ball one. Tough play right there by Murphy, and that's a good play by Murphy. He's not known for his glove, but that's a good play. Well, a really good play right here. Hit very sharply by Shuffler. Rather than coming over there and trying to, to charge it at all, he just goes over and fields it and then throws it on one hop. I guess he didn't have a chance to charge that anyway. It was hit so sharply. Devin Mezzarocco now the batter has been on base all four plate appearances tonight. He had two out run scoring singles in the first and the third has been hit by pitches in the fifth and the eighth. But for a team labeled and statistically backed up with the worst bullpen in the National League they have been dynamite tonight. Only one base runner, one base hit, I beg your pardon, two base runners. 
going back to the sixth inning when Dusty Baker pulled out his starter Steven Strasburg. Grace worked a hitless scoreless inning. Trinan worked two innings of one hit shutout baseball. Hit about it. Romero, a one, two, three, ninth. And Albers here in the 10th. And Mesoraco on for the fifth straight time. Nothing and one on Peraza, who is one for four, knocked in a run with a single in the four run first inning. The only Reds run since the four run first came in the third. Two out double by Shubler and a single by Mesoraco. Well, this one hurt on Peraza, actually knocks the ball off his back knee. Not an easy thing to do. The Reds had four runs and five hits in the first inning. As now Steve Bauman will come out, the head trainer of the Reds, and talk to Peraza. These are things you never take lightly. I tell the story all the time about doing a playoff game seemingly 100 years ago now when Jermaine Dye of the Oakland Athletics fouled a ball off of his knee. He went down on the ground like we see a thousand times. Mm -hmm. Turns out he broke it in three different places on the foul ball. I have no idea what the exit velocity would be. You know coming off a bat on a foul ball that close to your knee. But I do know one thing. Whatever it is, imagine just putting, you know, some kind of a, a gun of some kind that held a baseball and blasting it off about two feet, whatever that miles per hour is, and hitting you right on the knee. Or just go out in the garage and grab a hammer. Yeah, good point. I know what it feels like on your thumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't mess with those things. The hammer, that is. That's right. To the count on Peraza. And naturally, after a player does that, you come right back in on him again. And Peraza's hurt. I mean, he is hurt. He doesn't even want to put any weight on it. No doubt that Peraza is in a lot of pain right now. You can just tell by what his normal mannerisms are at the plate in and around the batter's box compared to where they are right now.
taking a lot of time in between pitches to adjust the batting gloves, and that's normally not his M.O. He's just trying to hope that some of that pain can creep out of that knee for one more really good swing in this at bat. And he'll loop one into right, but a running grab made by Harper will end the inning. Nationals bat bottom of the tenth in a 5-5 game. Nationals come to bat in the bottom of the 10th inning of a 5-5 game, and it's the battery. Barnhart, the new catcher. Reds will bring in their closer in a tie game. Rysel Iglesias. Oh, nothing like getting a fresh battery out there, right? And that's what Brian Price does it right here. you got to figure that Mesoraco feels like he will beat up a little bit. They're obviously double switching in there so that Barnhart will come in and bat in the number nine spot and Iglesias elsewhere as he comes in no save on the road at least not for Iglesias tonight already it'll be Rayburn followed by a pinch hitter and then the top of the order in Turner here in the Washington 10th inning. Raz is still out there. I mean, I don't know where the Reds at this point would turn anyway. Because they've already used Alcantara as a pinch hitter. And they don't have anybody else who would be capable of playing the infield. No. You have Stuart Turner, who, who continues to be on this Reds team. And... and I mean, he never plays. Reds picked him up in a, in a, as a Rule 5 player. He was on the disabled list forever. And since he's come off, I mean, he never plays. Then you have Winker. And you have Kiblahan. Those are the only three players left on the Reds bench. The Nationals have used Drew Lynn. And Rayburn. You now, one of the reasons play. Taylor's not been used is, you know, he's kind of beat up right now. Now, Kibblehan could probably play third base. And you could move Peraza. Uh, move Suarez to short. Yeah. Well, Taylor has been beat up, we mentioned earlier, and it's, you know, he's not in the lineup tonight. It's one of the reasons they brought Defoe up, and he got the start in center field. He's gone swinging his Rayburn, but Taylor apparently is good enough to pinch hit because he's coming up right now. By 
Dynamic young outfield talent. Been red hot over the last eight games. 11 hits in his last 32 at bats with five doubles, two home runs, scored eight, knocked in six, took over in center field at the end of April. Fastball in there, strike nothing in two. Iglesias having a hard time keeping his hands dry. He's sweating so much to have sweat dripping down your forearms gets in your fingers and it's tough to get a grip on the baseball. Back to back case for Rysel here in the tenth. Kevin Cash, who's the manager of the Rays, after he saw Rysel Iglesias, made no bones about it. He said, that is the nastiest stuff we've seen all year long. And he only pitched one inning of one game in that series. Well, you know, it's really a shame. We talk about it all the time. I mean, look, you're lucky, and so you say, okay, we can check off that box to have a great closer. But there is no comparison between having a great closer and a great starter. And I think we all agree that if his right arm or right shoulder would hold up, if you had a preference, there is no debate as to where Rysel Iglesias would be, and that would be the front man in your starting rotation. This guy, I don't know if you agree, Chris, I really believe he had a chance to be a great starting pitcher. I agree 100%. Of course, he has to be 100% behind as well. And how do you predict whether your arm can hold up or not? That's the one thing that I've never figured out. That's a great point. I mean, you can't predict who's going to be hurt or when they're going to be hurt. Although nowadays, you have a pretty safe bet to look at a kid when he's 18 and say by the time he's 30, if he's still pitching, he's probably going to have surgery sometime. That one dumped into right field, a base hit by Turner. That's a winning run at first base with two outs here in the bottom of the 10th inning. And Goodwin coming up. He's had a good night tonight, Goodwin. He's hit a pair of home runs. He's walked twice. He fouled out his last time up ending the eighth inning. Total of four home runs in 31 games coming into this one tonight. And his club, two of them. Okay, I was really impressed with the one that he hit off Peralta. Just made his major league debut last season to Brian Goodwin. His last 10 games now, he now has five home runs. And eight extra base hit, extra base hits. Hooked into right field, a base hit. Turner's going first to third, and Bryce Harper will bat in the bottom of the tenth inning with a winning run at third base. What a I, night for Brian Goodwin. Now you got to ask yourself now, if you're Brian Price, how are you going to play this? Are you going to pitch to Harper? He's over on the night. 
He has walked in the second in the third inning, second time up. But you don't have any margin of error for Iglesias, who from time to time can walk a batter. Yeah, if you want Carper, you're going to face the leading hitter in the league. But he's right-handed. Yep, he is. We're about to find out. Looks like they're pitching to Harper. Your best against their best here. Best Nationals player, best, rest, best Reds pitcher. Ball one. Now what he gets to hit remains to be seen. Strike. He got a fastball to hit right there. Late again. Nationals do not have a hit tonight with runners in scoring position. 0 for 8. The Glacier is just trying to stay dry out there. It is so humid and so sticky. Sometimes those players that don't wear sleeves underneath their uniform have nowhere to, no way to keep your arms dry. That trickles down your arm into your hand. Takes time. Tardy again. of the 10th inning winning runners at third base with two outs in a 5-5 game. Two balls two strikes. Iglesias v Harper. Three and two. And this game is over. How ironic you come in. One of the best bullpens in the league against the worst bullpen in the league. And it's the Nationals bullpen in a boat race, which outpitches the Reds bullpen. Miller time moment brought to you by Miller Light, game winning hit by Harper. I mean, you look at the big three in the Reds bullpen tonight. Lorenzen, Peralta, Iglesias. They give up four runs. And the Nationals score back from a 4-0 deficit and a 5-1 deficit to down the Reds in the opening game of this weekend series. Tough one to lose here tonight, Chris Welch. Well, it is a tough one to lose, especially because you had the lead early on. Anytime you score four runs early against Steven Strasburg and you chase him from the game after five innings, you think you've got a really good chance to do some damage. I think the bullpen may be getting a little bit tired, Tom. It just looked that way. The trend being set right here. This team hasn't played great baseball on the road. 
You gave the Nationals a chance to get back in. This, this is a heartbreaker here. Um, Homer Bailey tomorrow. Maybe he brings a little different energy. All right, Reds Live starts right now. 